Manchester United against Spurs. Shaq, I want to stay with you for this one, if you wouldn't mind, because this crystal ball of yours, as you peer into the future, has been well used during your time at ESPN. Well, how well our... used and well wrong. Oh, yeah, bad. but but that's the thing. You can just say it's a crystal ball, and you just—it's like when the gremlins get in the system. You just blame them. It's not it's never your fault. But how, how on earth? Where do we even start with this one? Because both sides are consistently inconsistent, and both sides are predictably unpredictable. What does the crystal yeah. ball say for this one at Old Trafford? Man United Spurs on Sunday. Listen, uh, where, 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 where shall I start? I'll start with Manchester United. Okay. Um, I, I think, I, I, and I, I maintain this, I'm, I'm not at all convinced that Ten Hag is, is the manager for Manchester United. I said that even at the end of last season when, when they won the FA Cup, it didn't surprise me that they kept him on given that they won the FA Cup, but I don't think it was the right, right thing to do. Those decisions aren't aren't at all mine to me. And then everything you've seen this season, I don't think Manchester United have progressed at all. At the end of what I thought was a very good summer transfer window for them when they addressed so many of the issues. And so that points to none other than, than Eric Ten Hag as, as a manager, as maybe he is, is, well, you can't change the entire squad, but he certainly is, is, is the, the, the one, I, I think, that, that has this, this team underperforming. And I'm concerned that the, the team and, and individuals have kind of lost faith in, in Eric Ten Hag. And you see that in the performances. You saw that in, in Ten Hag's own criticism of, of the players after their game against, against 20. For Spurs, it's, it's, it's slightly different with, with Postacoglu. In that I, I still think that this is a work in progress. Postacoglu is trying to establish something of a culture about, about who Spurs are and, and in particular the way that they play. Um, you, you saw that with them against Carabag, even though going on to 10 men after, what was it, 10 minutes somewhere thereabouts. Mm. Um, they did not change their style. They did not change what, what, what they were doing. And while, yes, that may have harnessed some, some pain during the course of the season, I, I think Postacoglu is thinking of this um, a little bit more long-term. And I think the players are, are buying into it. Also against Carabag. Uh, you saw Solanke with, with, with an assist. Uh, you saw Johnson with a goal. And kind of given with really the criticisms around those two over, over the last three or four weeks, it's good to see them continuing with, with, with their own contributions. So for me, Spurs are trending um, slightly upward, while Manchester United are trending slightly downward. Mm. So I, I, I'm leaning Spurs, even though this game is at Old Trafford. Okay, change your mind on Saturday and change it again on Sunday and one of them is probably going to be right because you've done that before and it yeah. worked. Um, LME, on Wednesday, we, we spoke about Man United's worries and woes and ineptitude in front of goal. So without revisiting that, it's still available on YouTube if, if you want to see that. There are five games, five goals scored, five goals against. However, Hoyland's now back from injury. But as yet, he has not shared the pitch alongside Joshua Xerxes, because he's replaced him twice. Eric Ten Hag, we've seen, kind of prefers that one striker with three in behind. Is there a way that he might play both Xerxes and Hoyland in attack and go potentially a 4-4-2 or a 3-5-2 against Spurs on Sunday? I mean, I think it's a good question because at this point, you know, as we alluded to, as you mentioned a few days ago, and Shaq had talked about Manchester United, Eric Ten Hag needs to really now come out with anything that he can uh, out of his uh, strategy book now, because things are not working, right? They created 15 chances against Crystal Palace, scored zero, right? Marcus Rashford, 13 goals in 60 appearances. You know, even though he likes to play against Tottenham, he scores a few goals against them. They're, they're clearly lacking, right? So, so you need to now experiment and do something. If Hoyland is indeed ready, ready to go, why not? Because also the Joshua Sochi situation is very talented player, but he's not this lethal goal scorer that everybody thinks or some people think. He only scored 14 goals in Serie A in the last two seasons, so he clearly needs help. So there is, uh, you know, an argument to be made that maybe we need more metal up front against the Tottenham side, by the way, who have won the last three matches against Manchester United. Here's the thing about this game. This is a participation trophy game because Manchester United and Tottenham need to be realistic about who they are. All right. It's it, the, the chances and the objectivity and the realities of them trying to get Champions League football is so far away. Europe Maybe it's a possibility, but at this point, at 11th and 10th place, this is a game where really, actually, 
If there is a bad loss from either way, specifically more Ten Hag, because I agree with Shaka Hislop, I think Eric Ten Hag really is walking on thin ice once again. But let's say United lose this, and they lose this pretty badly, and they don't even have to lose it badly, to be honest, then the murmurs of the impatience will continue to grow, and they will get very, very big. Because right now, you have to understand that you got the Man City, Arsenal, Liverpool, Aston Villa, Chelsea's looking good at the Maresca, Newcastle United's still up there, Brighton, Forest, and Fulham are above both of these teams. Because so this is a very important game. This is a very important game because mm. it's trying to show who they're going to be in the rest of the season. I agree with Shaka about Tottenham and Postacoglu and the system, but there's a few things going on with Tottenham since Postacoglu has arrived that have really not changed. Since November 2023, they've won three matches away from home. That's terrible. Terrible if you want to climb up that table. And also, they don't control games at the beginning. After Man City, they've claimed the most points in losing positions, which is a good thing. But Tottenham, it takes them a while to get going in the game. And this is a problem if you want to be an elite club in the Premier League. So this is a very big game, and it's going to tell us a lot about what's going to happen. If Manchester United loses 2 nothing or something like that, oh, my God. I, I, I mean, listen, like United fans maybe have said, look, enough is enough. And if Postacoglu loses 2 nothing, it's not as bad. But again, the trend continues. You need to win away from home if you want to be something. I can hear the keyboards tapping. Just to clarify something you said, Spurs haven't won their last three. They're unbeaten in their last three against Unbeaten Man in the last three, yes, correct. Wh which sorry. is fine, which, which leads me on to the next one for Shaq. Having played at Old Trafford, has the fear factor gone for opposition teams going to Old Trafford to face Man United, Shaq? Uh, yeah, long gone. But, I mean, that, that came some, some time ago. Um, I don't think I don't think teams are, are, are that worried about going to a traffic anymore. But, especially this version of, of of Manchester United. That that's not a factor. Were you scared when you went there? Because you had some yes. real good Man United players. What was it that, that scared you? Was it was it everything? Was it a combination of the team that you were facing were that good, which Man United aren't at that level just now? And as a result, the fans kind of went there thinking, how many are we going to win today? Yeah, listen, Manchester United could beat you any which way, or certainly the version of Manchester United I played against, whether it was physical and you're talking about the Yap Stabs and the Roy Keynes and everything that came with that, or, or, or just pure pace um, with, with Ryan Giggs, and, um, that, 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 you know, that, that, type of, that, that type of player, or, or just pure quality in terms of, of what they were able to, to put in their, their forward line, whether it's about Rude Val, Nissa Roy, or the your, your cold partnership, they, 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 how, how do you counter that? What, what kind of game plan do you come up with that? And, and they made it look easy. And, and, and they knew they were good. They knew they were better than the, than, than the opponent. And, and it told. And, and, and so it was always a kind of a fearsome place to go because um, you knew that that team could, could run up the score quite easily if they got things right. You were just hoping that you'd get them on an off day, and you had mm. your best day. A couple of quick questions from um, viewers. Thank you for your messages. We always check them. We just chuck away the things that are naughty and bad language and everything like that, so keep them away. But the good questions will give you a chance to, to ask to the guys. Uh, one of them, who lasts longer, Postacoglu or Ten Hag? LME? Postacoglu. Because of what Shaka said earlier, I think, yes, there is an emergency and an urgency for Tottenham to keep going, but they are in the Europa League. You know, there is signs of what they want to be under Postacoglu, and I think that there is a little bit of a more patient stance with the Australian Greek manager. Ten Hag, we've been here before. Like Shaka said it, like he thought he was gone in the summer. Like, and again, like, you know, against FC20, they drew at Old Trafford. Like, that's, you know... Shaka keeps talking about, like, you know, when he played them nights, I totally agree with him. Like, United were a different animal. Now, not so much. And part of it, yes, is what's happening behind the scenes. But Eric Ten Hag really needs to get things going. I think Postigolu stays longer just because of the objectives for both. But it's a very important game and a very important season for sure. And another question, Shaq. Who's more likely to get Champions League football, if any of them? It's 10th against 11th right now, Man United or Spurs? I don't see I don't see either of the two getting Champions League no. football. 